We're here at the British Computer Society in London today with David Whale, who is a volunteer working with the IET, who's been working on the Microbit project, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. David, it's great to have you here, it really is. Hi, Max. So tell us, what is the Microbit then? Well, the Microbit is a small piece of the future. This is the Microbit. It's a very, very small codable platform that children can use to learn coding. And shall I go through some of the features? Yes, please. Yes, device? what does it do? Okay. So it's a real computer. It has a real computer uh, processor in it. It has 25 LEDs. Uh, it can display different um, patterns on. Two buttons. And on the back, it has um, a main process that runs the code. Um, it has a onboard compass, so you can sense which way it's facing, and an accelerometer, um, so it can sense the tilt in three directions. It can sense movement. It can sense which way it's facing. And then on the bottom here, we have a number of pads. So we have 0, 1, and 2, and those can be uh, connected to electronic circuits. So these are similar to the general purpose of without the pins we find on a Raspberry Pi. That's correct. Okay. And these pins, you can use them as digital inputs and outputs, so you can turn LEDs on and off. Um, with a little external controller, you can power motors turn, and uh, speed control motors. You can sense whether um, a, a button has been pressed, so you can plug a little button into them. They're also touch sensitive, so as you touch them, it will sense the resistance between ground and that pin. Mm. It can sense it's been touched. And they can measure an analog voltage as well. So we can plug in little um, uh, resistive or voltage uh, generation circuits. So this sounds like a great way into the sort of physical computing. Oh, of definitely, yes. definitely. What were the BBC setting out to do with this? So uh, what the BBC wanted to do was to inspire a generation. And um, industry has been saying for ages, and I work in industry. Um, that we find it really, really hard to recruit people with the right skills mm -hmm. and the right knowledge of computing. So what we're hoping is that, that um, by giving away, uh, did I say how many of these we're giving away? How many of these are we giving away? Uh, BBC are giving away a million of these to, to school so children. every 11 Every, year old. every yes. 11, 11 year old. Um, and the, I, the idea is that we hope that these can be easy enough to use, but they can go um, quite a long way with them in terms of all the, the features of them. Mm. And they can have an idea um, and they can try that idea out as they have the idea, and we're hoping that we're going to turn them into the inventors of the future. So this, this is this is the future. This is so the future. a million inventors, you think, or is it only going to be a small proportion of that? I don't know. That's I mean, I, I think it's going to be quite a large percentage. Okay. And, and the reason I say that is I've um, seen a lot of um, uh, children in schools engaging with these, and they're not necessarily people that you'd think that would take up. Right. Um, so you see uh, children at um, uh, school sports events, and mm. there's one lad that shows the project he did with two microbits, um, that he used it to sense which foot he was using when playing football. Mm. And he wasn't really interested in technology, but the, te the microbit gave him a way to explore that idea and to prototype it and try it out very quickly. Well, okay. Now, tell us how we go about programming one of these. There's no way we're going to write our code with just those two little buttons. No, no, you'd be there all day pressing those buttons. Right. So what you do is you use another computer okay. to program it. And one of the things that this chip here does, this is the interface chip, is that it allows you to connect by USB to your computer. Hmm. So you can power this from a battery pack, have a little battery pack here, and make it do something. Um, or you can plug it into a USB cable, yeah. and then you can plug that into a uh, Mac, PC, Linux machine, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, some tablets. Uh, first thing to do, um, as a um, computer programmer, the first program you always write is... Oh, Hello World. Hello yes. World. Now, Hello World on a micro bit is either going to be putting a smiley face on there or it's going to be putting your name on there. Oh. And, and what I like to do Can we is not write Hello World? We can write Hello World. World. Okay. We can write Hello World. <laughs> right. So you don't actually write the code on the micro bit, you write it on a PC, yeah. Mac, Raspberry Pi, Linux machine, and tablet, and uh, you go to www.microbit.co.uk, and you have some choices here, and the very first thing you do is click the big create code button in the middle. And you don't even need to have an account in order to be able to do this. No. You're signed in, you've got access to all of your code on there, but yeah, you so can just visit the website and start 
typing out something. Yeah, you don't have to have any login account at all. So we have four editors. In we have. We've got uh, Microsoft Block Editor, we've got Microsoft Touch Develop, Coking's JavaScript, and Python. Okay. So we're going to go through a little bit of all four of these. But Fine. Let's yes, start, please. I'm going to start with the Block Editor. And we think of the block editor, I suppose it's a little bit like Scratch. Yeah. You know, there's little jigsaw puzzle pieces you can you can drop down. So we click on new project, and you don't even have to think of a name for it. <laughs> it's gonna be incredible. Incredible script, script on this occasion. <laughs> now just like our BBC Micro, we have a blank canvas. So it's up to us to decide. Semi blank canvas. Semi blank canvas. <laughs> some, some little icons and things on it. So what I'm going to do is click on basic and show string. And I'll tell you what, let's be a bit topical, shall we? Let's say hello, Miles. All right. Is that okay? Now let's imagine that you've left your mic a bit at home. Mm. What are we going to do? Well, I'll send the child home and maybe bring it back, surely. Well, you could do. <laughs> but if you just press the run button, we have a little built in mic bit here. And there's hello, Miles. Okay, so Sorry, we have a nice system. emulator of a mic bit on the screen. That's right. And it's quite an accurate emulator. You can uh, you can press buttons on it, you can touch on the pads, um, you can yep. tilt it and move the canvas okay. itself. So now we need to get that code from the screen there onto the micro bit. And the way you do that is you plug the USB cable in, the right way around, and the compile button that compiles that program into a language that the micro bit understands. And we then get this little file downloaded. It's called a hex file. Okay. And that hex file is machine code that the processor on the micro bit will run directly. Yeah, so okay. it's been converted from the blocked language into ARM machine code that runs on the ARM processor yep. on the back. Okay, so you've compiled that and so that's compiled produced that a, hex a hex file. And what I'm going to do is over here on the right, I have a micro bit. Yep, showing up just as if it were a USB stick or something. That's such. right. So um, most schools will allow USB sticks to be plugged in. And to program that into there, we pick up the hex file and we drop it onto the micro bit. And we see a little flashing light. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call in the industry, it's flashing the micro bit. Yeah. There's two reasons why we say flashing. Uh, one is obviously the light is flashing. Secondly, is that the ARM processor chip on the back has a special type of memory and it called flash memory. And it's memory that will remember its settings when you power it down. So if I power this down, and then I plug the power back in again, and we see there's hello. And we see have a miles there as well. Splendid. There we go. And we don't need to use the USB cable for power. We can use your little battery okay. pack. We can use a battery pack as well. So you get one of these in the kit. Standard AA batteries. And there's Hello Miles. Yes. So if I really wanted to, um, you can get little clips to hold the batteries in the back. Put that across my blazer pocket. And there and walk around. <laughs> and everybody knows who you are. So that's from a computing perspective. That's great. We've got we've written a piece of code on our main computer. Hmm. We've compiled that code into a, a language that the, the ARM process on the back works. We've transferred that into the flash memory and we've run the code. Um, obviously, the next thing to do is to enhance it. Okay. Now, there's only that's only output, isn't it? Yeah. Only got so we have processing and we have output. We're not using the input on there as yet. So let's make a super duper version two main batch, and let's say. Um, let's say that this is going to be a Miles mood badge. Okay, so you're walking around the class, and then we want the children to know whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood. And if you're in a good mood, then they can laugh and joke with you. And if you're in a bad mood, then they have to be very, very careful. Okay, what they'd say. I want the bad mood and very bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to this input, and we're going to say on button A pressed. And I think I'm not going to use that. Text. Anymore. I'm going to use a little display of LEDs. Yes. Tick these little boxes here, and that will be a smiley face. The yes. button A will. We have be... a little bitmap there, don't we? So it's yes, on or five by five, yes. five bitmap. Yes. Um, and then we'll say on button B pressed. So you can do button A, button B, or both buttons. Yes. And let's show. 
say base. And like good software engineers, we should really test this first. So let's test it in our simulator. So we press A and we get a smiley face. Good, yes. And we press B and we get a sad okay. face. We have essentially a finite state machine going on here, don't we? We have two states. <laughs> yes. Sorry, two and states. a transition between them. Yes. <laughs> so let's compile that. Which again produces the hex file, which is the machine code. So we now have another little machine code file here. And it's called incredible run, I think. Put that on the mic a bit. Flashes the code. Mm -hmm. So this is input, process, and output. So we press A, and we get a smiley face. So the kids can laugh and joke with you. And then or someone upsets you and you decide you're in a bad mood, so you press button B and sad face, so you know you have to be very careful of what you say. So that's input process and output. Yeah. The, the last thing I'll show you, just because mm. it's really, really good fun, is uh, some of the other inputs. There's loads of ways of inputs yes, yes. used. So there's an on shake. <laughs> so I'm going to say, um, let's have on shake. Let's draw a little coffee cup so that when you're feeling a bit thirsty, let's just go straight to the car and it's like. Or was it the same that good software engineers testing their code? Yeah, I know. Flashing their code. So this now has three types of input. It's got a button A, mm -hmm. a smiley face. It's got a button B and a sad face. And then when we shake it, we get... Well, the last thing to say about blocks, actually, okay. is there's quite a lot in it. So you can play music, there's a gaming library, right. um, you can sense pins. So all of the features of the micro that you can use. Right. Um, but intentionally, it's constrained in terms of the size of the program that you can create. You can create a big program, uh, and you have to zoom out, basically. Yes, yes. Uh, and then it gets quite hard to read. So there's no decomposition, yeah. as we call it in computing. You can't create a function. You can't create a function. So you've got built-in functions here in the palette, yeah. but you can't then group those together and say, I'll have that as a function. So there will be a natural point when you feel that the children are running out of steam, if you like, in this environment. We have a low floor, we have high walls, but we don't have a particularly high ceiling. Yeah, yeah. definitely. definitely. Uh, and I think that's a positive, because um, it's a reason to then transition from the yes. visual language to something a bit more textual. So you make a one-way upgrade. It's like okay. when we are upgrading, um, and it, right. it writes your code in right. Touch Develop, so you can see what it's going to look like. And Touch Develop is a text-based language. It is, yeah. yeah. And you interact with it a bit, a little bit more visually in terms of um, uh, in touching on the screen. You tap on something. commands yeah. rather than having to type yeah. everything. You can type it, you can, yeah. type, you can type it, but it works really well if yeah. you if you follow. So certainly looking at it on the screen there, it looks like a text-based programming language. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, so that is the same same code. Mm. So you see it says on button A press smiley face, on button B press sad face. Yes, shake. yes. Which is really nice that, that we can see the link from the blocks that we've created to what that looks like. There's a number of events running inside a, is that a repeat forever or is this the main Program, it's just the main loop, yeah. yeah. So then we press convert, and then we get incredible script converted. Okay. Now what you'll notice, if you go back to here, there's my original block. There's your blocks, yes. And there's the converted yes. one. So I haven't lost the original one, so if I mess this one up, I can always go back to yeah. that. Um, so, so we can see this one here if I then... And again, you have the on-screen emulator, on emulator. So you can try this. You can press A, you can press B. And how do you shake it? You press the shake <laughs> right. now, You don't you, actually shake the laptop. You, you can, yes. well, you, you can shake it. You can see down the yeah. bottom, you can see the acceleration the changing. changing. Um, but uh, the, the designers, they added in the shake button to make the shake just a bit easier. So, yes. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you will be able to say shake the laptop. One important point there, though, is if you run this on a mobile phone, you can shake your mobile phone. Yes, yes. So they have accelerometers. Yeah, they have accelerometers inside them. And you can turn it. And, it and this is things. now. The editors are things which you can run on a mobile phone. You can run yeah. this on a tablet, on an iPad, on whatever, and still be able to beam the code yeah. onto the microbit. Yeah. It's nice.
And so one of the main things about to actually develop, let's uh, create a new one code so we can go straight into attached develop. So again, you get a reasonably blank canvas. Okay, with our main code loop. Main code, oh, yes. main code function, that's right. Um, but you get this palette. Which so are very similar to the palettes which you had back in the block editor, of course, so the names are. Yeah, yes. yeah they're, they're yeah. in the same group, so you've got yeah. basic and pins and devices and so on. Um, now this really, really flies on the touch surface. So if you're using a tablet right. or a phone, I challenge anyone, try this on a phone and then tell me how you would write code okay. on a phone any other way. And then really, the, I mean, you can type. So I can type if, and I get the if statement. Okay, right. So it's doing um, the sort of IntelliSense predicting what you're doing. Yeah, so, so it's predicting what, yes. uh, what you're doing. Um, but if you was on a phone or a tablet, then probably what you would do is you would um, be pressing the buttons. Yeah. So the best way to use it is to use the buttons on the palette. If you've got a touch surface, right. even better. Um, so let's think. Let's do basic uh, show LEDs. And let's do... Uh, so we get a slightly different editor, and then let's run that, and we get a smiley face. Yeah. Now, one of the improvements that you can make um, in Touch Develop that you couldn't do quite as easily in blocks is you can do animations. Mm. So uh, we can say show animation, and let's think of an animation. Let's have a face. That and I'll add a frame to it. Oh, nice. And then let's move the eyes up a bit, shall we? Because we're not going to go here very well. Put some other ones in. And then you see it animates there on the right, so it's a mouth that's open right. and closing. Yes, yes. But you can have any, any number of frames. It's just a I've had animation I've had animations with the 30 <laughs> frames in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can change the playback rate as well. So what you get here, it says, show this animation, these are the two frames, yes. and there's 400 milliseconds between each I see frame. a whole world of old school 25 yeah. pixel animations <laughs> opening up in front of us. Now here's a question for you. So I've run that program, and it's opened its mouth, and it's not doing anything else. Mm. Well, it's event driven. You just run the program, and it's done what it says. Mm. I'm, I'm guessing you need to put some sort of repeat on Put a loop around so, it. Yeah, so let's, let's have that. Okay, so we get a little loop, and then let's say let's make that a bit quicker. So let's change this to what is the four hundred represent? So it's two, uh, four hundred milliseconds. So that's the, it's the delay, the delay between, between each frame. frame. Right. So then I run that, and now we get a faster pace. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the pause going? The, the way the microloop works is it has to decide where um, uh, where to spend its time in the program. Okay. And. Uh, it could be running the main loop, or it could be checking to see if there's any events. Right. And it's not like a Mac or a PC that has a big operating system on it. So it's, a, it's got a tiny, tiny operating system, very, very tiny operating system. And it has to schedule where it's spending its time. Mm. So if you leave the program in a very, very tight loop, mm. doing something uh, continuously, um, you can get into a problem where it doesn't have any time to go and check to see if the button's been pressed. Okay. So um, in the in the early versions of the, yeah. the editor that we tested, this was always um, tripping people up. So yeah. what um, Touch Develop does, it automatically put a small pull statement yeah. in the loop, so that you don't naturally which would allow us to add another 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 Yeah, so we can okay. so we can we can now add in um, if button pressed. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and that will that code will will run often enough. Okay, because the, the operating system is clever enough to know that when yeah. it's hit a pause instruction, it may go and check I can see go what and else is there. see whether anybody else can click through. Okay, so that's the Microsoft editors, which are the block one, and the touch develop editor. There's another couple built into the system. There is, yes. So, um, Code Kingdoms mm -hmm. is a JavaScript based editor on the left here. So, so what's quite nice about the Code Kingdoms, another very nice visual environment. So you start off with this visual environment here, and let's uh, draw a pattern on the screen. So we're dragging and drop. Okay, very There's some predefined oh, patterns. I like that. So <laughs> uh, let's have a tick, shall we? Here's one we made out of. Yeah, yeah. Let's run that. So you get you get that on your mic a bit. Yeah. Um, but what's quite nice about this is you have this slide at the bottom, and there's four levels of view. 
So over here is completely visual. Right. And over here is completely textual. Yeah. So we can gradually take away the visual scaffolding. So we take away some of the icons and some of the boxes and colouring. Yes. And eventually we end up with... I say we're into binary now. Just jars okay. the binaries. This, this is the actual bitmap. Of yes, of course it is. Zero graph, one graph. Yeah. So I can say, well, I know what a binary means. Let's put some ones there at the top. And let's put a one either side. So I'm um, coding You're the binary writing now. The binary writing the square. binary. You recognise it. There you go. <laughs> and then we can even say, ah, what does that really look like? Oh, how clever. clever. Yes, yes. yes. Um, it's very clever in that... It's the you... same programme, but just yeah. represented, represented in differently. a different form. Yes. So, so we, yeah. Not only is it the same algorithm, but it is actually the same code internally. We're just yeah. looking at it differently. Yeah. As a user, I suppose. Yeah. So, so what I like about that is that it breaks away those barriers that visual programming and texture programming are different things. They're actually the same thing. Yeah. It's just and you could imagine some teachers using this as an approach to differentiation. Mm -hmm. Circle table, you programming level zero using the visual interface, mm -hmm. whereas you know the pentagon table, you by all means use the the, the just JavaScript and binary. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they could compare their experiences yes. between the yes. again, yes. say what they liked about text yes. and what. So one of the things you can do in the text and indeed, if you the first. Here, <laughs> yes. um, is so it's just like a text editor. So you can say, I'll take copy that and I'll paste it in a few more times. Oops. And then I can go and edit these ones. Mm. And then I can scroll this back again gradually and you'll see the different shapes. Yeah, again. okay. So, so there's a really, so if you get a little bit scared at this end, you think, I'm not quite sure what's yeah. happening, you can always wind back a little bit. And <laughs> Which is quite nice from a differentiation perspective, because they can always sort of say, no, no, I'm struggling here, let me have a go at the easier version. Yeah. Or, I'm, this is so easy, let me move on. Yeah. I mean, I mean a lot of people you know, will make that transition, say from, say from scratch to Python, but of course, the languages are different. Yes. Yeah. Um, whereas this gives you a chance to start off with the concepts and the syntax and terminology language, yeah. and then make that transition and say, oh, it's only just words, the same thing. Um, and then upgrade to one of the bigger languages to, to then make the jump into yeah. a completely textual language. Um, so again, like the touch developing blocks, there's a palette of things you can do down here. Um, there's a whole load of resources on the Microbit yeah. website um, with various uh, games and things you can you can guess at um, uh, some of the device functionality, so um, making your phone ring, making the uh, uh, device vibrate. And this is via Bluetooth. Started yeah. to make some of the Bluetooth yes. appear in there as well. Play music, so there's quite a lot. Um, read and write pins. Oh, okay. Yes, you can do all the GPIO uh, analogs, so you can yeah. do like an um, analogs uh, temperature sensor or something. So I could use this as a. Uh old school data logger, I could plug some sort of temperature sensor across a couple of these pins mm. and start tracking, you stop, definitely could, yes. storing that data. Yeah, you definitely could. So that's the Coke Kingdom's JavaScript editor and we then have Nicholas Tolivier's micro Python we do. for the micro bit. We do. Now, this is exciting. There's, um, there's two ways of accessing this. All right. So this is the um, the web-based editor that's built into yeah. um, the BBC Microbit website. Um, there, there's an important difference with the Python compared to the other languages. So what the other languages do is they're compiled. Yes. So it will compile your blocks or your code kingdoms JavaScript into ARM machine code, yeah. uh, and then you flash that onto Microbit yeah. to run the machine code. The difference with the Python is that the Python language runs on the microbit and it's interpreted. Okay. So, you so can, we have not only the runtime environment, but a Python interpreter running on that tiny little chip. That's right. A complete, okay. a complete and it's complete. Yes. So it doesn't have all of the millions of Python libraries. No, that would be but asking it's, them. But, but it's the complete Python 3 language it's written to run on a tiny microbit. Yes. It's called MicroPython. Yes. Um, so what, anything which we can do in Python with very standard libraries, we can do on the microbit. Mm. And, and, and the, um, uh, there's a load of pre-written uh, code that you can import to access the display and the buttons and the pins yeah. and devices yeah. and so on. 
So, so this is um, the web-based experience. If you don't want to install anything onto your computer, um, you can have the same experience. You can, yeah. Uh, and we can... Oh, that's a very nice text editor. It's very, very nicely laid out. Uh, so let's download that. We get a hex file. Like so what else. we're downloading there is essentially the whole of my... Oh, look, you can see the that's hex, the hex file. file. Thank you very much. Right. That's all it is. Yeah. Just loads of numbers. Yeah. So if we were to put that into a, a, a different sort of editor, we would see that Python program in there. Yes. Okay. And you could actually hack into that and you could see the program listing. So it's the whole of the Python language. Yes. And then at the end of it, we just glue all the, yes. the yeah. Python codes. So if you, if you were to look at those hex codes, um, in, in the ASCII chart, you would find, we'd see you would find the F, you'd find ASCII, the R, right. the R, yes. the N, and so on. That's yes. actually inside the yeah. code. Um, so let's drag that onto a micro bit. So we program it in exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Drag a hex file and it flashes it. So it's a whole other Python language and our little uh, nine line program going okay. down. So it's saying uh, hello world. Yes. And then there should and be a heart for. Okay. Oh, and three indeed seconds. a heart appears. And it's a wild yeah, truth that would go around and do it again. a couple of seconds. This uh, layout of wild truth is typical of any program that's inside a consumer product. So the minimal program you put inside any form of electronic product will have a wild truth yes. on the outside. So, so even if everything just looks as though it's event driven, waiting for you to tap on the icon or to, to there is press some the button, wild, wild there's essentially a big repeat until false yeah. while true yeah. loop running around the outside of that. Yeah. Okay. So um, so we can save and store scripts and, and so yeah. on there. Um, so that's in in the web. There is um, an offline editor which gives you some additional features which is worth showing and uh, you can download that from the website. So now I've got it pre-installed here. It's called Mew. And let's uh, let's start from a, a blank page. Now, one of the nice things about this, because if you don't put a program in, you get the Python interpreter yes. and then no program. Okay. If we just flash that into a micro bit, so you don't have to use the drag and drop key, you press yes. the flash button, and it, it does the drag and yeah. drop for you. So it flashes in the Python. Okay. And then I press this little button here and it says REPL. What do you think REPL means? <laughs> now, I may get this wrong. Is it read, evaluate, print loop? That's right. That's well really done. Yes. Well done. <laughs> okay. So what it does, it gives you a prompt and it reads what you type. It evaluates that to work out what to, have, what to do with it. It prints the result and it loops around again. Okay. So basically, anything we do here, so this little prompt at the bottom, we are now talking to the micro bit. As I press buttons on here, we should see that little light flashing. You see the light flashing? Yes. So that's, the, okay. that's that character being yeah. sent across the serial cable to the micro bit, and then it's sending it back right. again. So let's try it. Let's use it as a calculator. So if you hold the micro bit, Thank that's, that's going to be our calculator. And I'm going to say 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, that's nothing on, is appearing on screen Nothing on the there. micro bit. Ah, but it's talking via the USB yeah. cable to the processor on here, which is running MicroPython. Micro We've given it a, a, a command, one plus two to evaluate, and it's responded not on the 25 pixel display, but back down the USB cable yeah. and given us the answer three. Okay. Now, now you might think that's a bit old school, yes. but actually it's really, really Just powerful. Okay, it's on. really, really powerful, because we can now, we don't have to keep compiling and downloading, compiling and downloading our program. What we can do is we experiment in this little window here. Yeah. And the whole of the Python language to the micro bit is available from this, from this record. Right. So I can ask for a directory. It gives me a <laughs> listing of all the things that the micro bit does. Oh, there's a thing called display. Display dot, press tab, and it gives me a list of all the things I can do on the display. Yeah, nice. Display dot show. Hello, Miles. And then I press enter. You ready for this? I am. Press enter, and it says "Hello, Miles." One letter at a time. That's a display that show. It's really. I can do a. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't get quite so excited. <laughs> I can do a display dot scroll. Yeah. Hello, Miles. You ready? And that's it. Scrolling. 
So the feedback is instant. Yes. Um, yes. And and all of the features yeah. of the micro we can access from that. So we'd like to see something really fun with that. Go on. Okay. So let's say we want to get some data from the accelerometer. Ah. And we want the data to go over to the computer. And then someone will do something with that data that comes into the computer. So there's a thing called the accelerometer. Now, MicroPython has code completion, so you can type in a bit of the word and press enter. Yeah. Hit X, and I press enter, and it says 32. Brilliant. Okay, so number 32 you, of it. Do you know how to do it that way? Okay. Press the up arrow, I get the number minus 9. No, that's, that, that's gone down so much. Turn it that way. <laughs> I'm expecting again. a big positive, big positive number. number. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's so okay. this is tilted, checking how far it's tilted mm. on this, on this, against this axis. So let's make it a bit more light. So let's say while true, print, get x, and we're, for good measure, let's put the y in there as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sleep for, say, 100 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, now move it. So that's one axis. That way as well. And that's the other axis. So we've got an X and a Y. So in terms of my data logging thing, this is what I'm looking for here, isn't yeah. it? This is getting some sort of data straight off this. And I could do exactly the same thing with the pens. I could be running temperature sensors mm -hmm. or microphones yeah. or all sorts of things off here and get live data onto my computer. Yeah. Okay. David, can you explain what the runtime is, please? Mm, sure. So um, all those languages that we used, um, they, they need other things to run on the computer to make yes. it work. So the runtime is a whole load of pre-written code that comes with the, the ARM platform. And it does things like uh, accessing your devices and running code and everything. And all the languages are built on top of that. So it's the common code that all the other languages rely on. Um, so uh, we, do, we don't have an operating system as such, but there's still some code that makes things happen. And I've read about a device abstraction layer. What does that mean, please? Okay. So uh, that is a very, very thin layer on top of the runtime. So if you imagine the runtime as a bunch of this is C++, C++ code, um, and there's a, a series of functions that you can call, and those functions will do things like display something on the screen yep. or read the accelerometer or right. read the pins. Um, and then all of those features through the device abstraction layer, just a set of function calls, are okay. used by all the languages. That so, makes sense. So, so yeah. rather than writing all of that code four times, it's been written once. Yeah. So you've got a great, great piece of decomposition, a great piece of reuse. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, so we write it once, we test it once, we release it once. Yeah. And then each of the four languages can use all the same. So this is similar to an API application. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the, the, the device, device layer is an API. Yeah. But it's a set of functions that all the languages were called into to make things happen on the micro bit. And you've been involved with these IET Faraday challenge days. What are they? What are you doing? Yeah, they're great. So uh, I forget, it's like 140 around the country. And uh, basically, it's a, it's a whole whole day off timetable STEM challenge. Wow. Uh, six teams of six, the yes. first six children, yes. um, and we set them a challenge. And we say, um, come up with an idea for a product in one of these four categories, mm. and then prototype it and use a micro bit as a way of prototyping that. It's so it's really get, great it, it, it really, really fab day. It's, yes. it's all about coming up with an idea and then using the micro bit to bring the idea yes. to life. And there's a little Dragon's Den style presentation at the end where they have to present to the judges and be graded. And they, uh, they, win, a, they win a prize for school. And then there's a competitive development nationally, and we'll have a, a national final uh, later in the year. And finally, the micro bit is something to be given to the 11 year olds, to the children in year seven, but it's being distributed via schools. What are teachers to do? What would be your top tips for, for managing that, for, for doing something other than just having them over? Yeah, I think we should probably take some inspiration from some teachers that have already been doing this and doing yes, a really good yes. job. So um, there's some teachers that have been uh, emailing me and saying what they've been doing is they've been doing some uh, initial lessons with them just to say, uh, let's get you started, let's make yeah. sure that you've got your micro bit, you know how to use it, you've done a few little uh, exercises and workshops with it. Um, they've even invited parents into the school 
Yeah. So I feel like that when we start to parent the CBD yeah. thing, say let's come and find it's out what about for, for when these get the ongoing home. engagements. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, some teachers are doing collaborative projects, so you've got a class of 30 of these. So then making a project where you can link them all together with wires or yeah. with a, you know, with a with Bluetooth or something. Uh, people building lots of uh, gaming boards and projects and then the children have to write uh, an aspect of that game on their microbit yeah. and plug it into the system. So it's, um, it's providing some inspiration in school. So I think it is, yeah. I think it's more people... of the class will want to do something interesting with yeah. them when they get them to take them themselves. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that we do in the IT is to try and put things in context. Yeah. And I think that's something that teachers can really, really do. Nice. To say, well, well here's, here's a piece of technology. It's yours to keep. Yes. But let's put that in context of well, what sorts of things you Solving can do. Solving problems. Yeah. Um, and then you solutions. take it home and let's see what you do. And I think it'd be really, really nice for a lot of the children to come back in uh, you know, in September um, yes. and say, you know, the show and tell, tell this yeah. is what I did with it. Um, uh, and that would be really, really great to see that. David, thank you so much for such a brilliant introduction to this amazing little device. Thank it's you. great. It's great fun, isn't it? It really is. I, I can see there's going to be a, not necessarily a million, but there's going to be a large number of little inventions made by this. That's so. It'll be good fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't miss out on Computing at School's great content here on YouTube. Subscribe to our CAS TV channel.